In this example, we're going to look at how we can take pieces of clip art that's available with the software and assemble them using a step-by-step -step process. We're going to look at the layout, we'll then look at the height adjustments, and then we'll move on and look at some finishing techniques, and then ultimately we'll put the overall model in a dish. So let's just go and close this down, and then we'll go and create a new file. So going to make the width 8 inches, the height is 8 inches, we'll set Z0 off the top of the material block. Material thickness is half an inch. We'll set the XY datum position to be in the centre. We're going to go with a high modelling resolution and then I can go and press OK. So when we start to assemble clip art to make a new model, you can do this on the spot by just bringing clip art into the session, or you may have some visual reference material in the form of a photograph or a sketch, and this will help you to lay out your components. So in this case, um, I have created a sketch that I'd like to roughly follow. So I'm going to go into this option here in the drawing tab to import bitmap for tracing. From the Golf Award project folder, we're going to bring in the Golf Award sketch JPEG. So it's just a scanned image, and we'll open that. You can see that there. I'm just going to alter the size of that. So if that's selected, let's go and set the size. I'm just going to make the width of this to be 6 inches, and that will scale the height in proportion. We can press Apply, and then we can close that form down. So now the next step is to locate my clip art and lay out my components roughly against this sketch using the Transform Objects tools. So then we're going to go into the Modeling tab and one way that I can bring clip art into my project is by using this option here to import a component or a 3D model. Okay, so you can see we've gone into the project folder and I'd like to bring in the simple laurelwreath.v3m file. We'll open that up. Another way that I could bring clip art into the session is by using the clip art tab. Now I've already installed the clip art that comes with the software, and then using the add folder option within the library browser, I've browsed through the folders on my PC, I've located the clip art folder, and then I've added those subfolders that you can see here. And you do that just by pressing OK. I'm just going to cancel this and so once we've got all of those folders there within our library folders I can just go through those, select them and I can easily see the clip art that uh, is within that folder in the bottom area here so it makes it a lot easier for me to view the clip art that I have available. Or alternatively I could use the local files option, browse through my PC and search for folders that contain um, my clip art. Okay, so we're going to go back to the library browser here. And so now we're going to locate the golf ball and the ribbon to put in our job. So let's go to objects and people. I'm going to browse through the clip art files and I can see the golf ball there, so I'm just going to double click that. Double clicking uh, will put that in the center of your job, so you can see that there. Then I'll move to the ribbons and banners option, and I'd like to use this one here, ribbon 4. So not only can we just double click, but I can select it and just drag that into position. So let's just go into the drawing tab and I'm going to tile my windows vertically. That way I can see the 2D view on the left and the 3D view on the right. And so now we're ready to look at sizing and positioning all of these components using the Transform Objects tools and then lay them out roughly against my bitmap. And so we'll start with the wreath. Uh, to help me, what I might do is go back into the modeling tab and I'm just going to switch off. Uh, the ribbon and the golf ball tee, just so I can see the wreath here. I'm going to the drawing tab, and with that wreath selected, let's go into set size. Okay, so you can see the width of that. I might just round that down and make that 5.5, press apply, and close that down. Okay, the position uh, is fine as it is, I think that's okay in the center there. So let's go into the modeling tab, and then we'll switch on the golf ball. Okay, so with that selected, let's go into the drawing tab. I'm going to go and size that. So we'll size that. Let's alter the height. We'll make that a little bit smaller. Let's try five, then press apply. 
Yes, it's still quite big, so let's try full and apply that. Yes, that's not too bad. So let's just close that down. And then I may take that and then holding down shift, I'm just going to drag that down a little just at the point that comes up to the bottom of my wreath here. However, I don't want it to go past the wreath, so I'm just going to hold shift again and just drag that up a little. Okay, so you can see it's just right at the bottom there. And having shift held down whilst we're moving a component just keeps it in line either horizontally or vertically. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So let's go into the modeling tab. Let's switch on the ribbon. We'll make that one the selected component. And let's go into the drawing tab. And what I'd like to do is just center this first. Before I do that, let's just zoom to fit so we can see all of the 2D view. And then with that component selected, we're going to go over to Align Selected Objects. We're going to align that uh, to the center of our material, like horizontally and vertically. Let's close that down. And then with that selected, let's just hold down Shift, and then we'll just drag that down. So I just want to point out this stage, I am only concerned with the layout of our components. I'm not worried about how they're interacting in the 3D view, looking at the heights and things like that. Once I've got my layout correct here, then we can move on and think about the heights of those components and getting that side of things looking correct. So with that ribbon selected, let's go over and set the size of that. Okay, so I think it's a little too wide, so we're just going to reduce that. So I'm going to make that 5 inches, press apply, close that down. Okay, so I'm happy with that. If we take a look at the uh, ribbon tails, we can see that they're fairly uh, close to the bottom of my wreath here. So I'm just going to zoom in there. What I'd like to do is alter this, uh, the overall shape of our ribbon. And we're going to do that by selecting that again to put it into transform mode. And I'm just going to take this handle and just drag that down just so that we create a space between the ribbon tail and the bottom of our wreath. And that's just so that a tool can fit in between there. So I'm going to do that again, and then I'm going to take the overall component and hold down shift and just move that up a little just so it sits within the center of the bottom of the wreath. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So let's just go and zoom to fit, and then we're going to go into the layers tab, and I'm just going to switch off layer 1 for the time being, just so that I can take a look at the bitmap. And so now when we compare the two, we can see that we've generally followed the bitmap, the sketch that we've got here. And so I'm happy with that general layout. So now we can go on and start thinking about the heights of all of these components. So let's just switch on layer 1 again. And I'm just going to maximize the 3D view. And so the idea here is to make sure that we create the look that a component is either in the foreground, the midground, or the background. Now in this case, I'd like the golf ball to be in the background, the wreath to be in the midground, and I'd like that ribbon to come prominent into the foreground. And so we're just going to alter the heights of those individual components to ensure that the overlapping areas are either in front, behind, or blending in correctly to one another. So we'll start by looking at the wreath, so I'm going to take that, and I'm going to select that again, to put it into transform mode and then we can see we have this blue square at the bottom and if I select that we can see that's now brought up a very short properties form and I can drag that uh, wherever I like in my view so I'm just going to move that out the way just put that in the top left hand corner there if we take a look at the shape height, you can see it's just below 0.3 and I think we've got uh, sufficient detail there. So I don't want to look at reducing the overall shape height of this anymore. However, we do have this problem at the bottom uh, where we want the ribbon to be proud of the wreath. So I could look at uh, reducing the height of just the bottom area of our wreath. And to do that, we use the fade option here. And this will allow me to fade a particular side of a component. So if I check that option there, you can see now that I have the ability to use this set anchor option. 
So I'm going to select the set option and then if I just drag my cursor into my model in plane we can see that I have an anchor and it has the number 1 next to it. So that's telling me that I need to set my first anchor point. So your first anchor point is the area in which you'd like the shape height to stay the same. Your second anchor point will be the area in which you'd like to fade down. So we'd like to fade from the top to the bottom. So I'm going to put my first anchor point in at the top here. So I'm just going to click in position there. And we can see now that I have an anchor with the number 2 next to it. And so that means I need to put in my second anchor point. Like I said, we're going to go from the top and fade down to the bottom. So we're going in this down direction. So I'm going to click at the bottom here and that will apply my fade and we can see that it's done that at a default of 50% there. Okay, so I think that's a little bit too much. I don't want to lose the detail that we've got here. So I'm just going to make that around 40% there. We'll just press space to enter that in. And we can see that's not too bad. And so the shape height up here remains the same except the height down here has been reduced by 40%. Okay, so I'm happy with that, even though we can still see the wreath seeping in through the ribbon, we could look at adding some height to the ribbon shortly. So I'm happy with the wreath the way that that is. So let's go and select our golf ball. And we can see that the form has been updated there. So we'll round that up to 0.3 and press space to enter that in. Let's just take a look a bit closer there. Okay, so I could look at also applying a fade on the golf ball as well as it's coming over a little bit too high and I'd like the golf ball to be right in the background. So we want that to come uh, below the wreath area here. So again, let's use the fade option. If I just put that in Z and then zoom in a little using the scroller of my mouse, I'm going to use the fade option. So we'll set our first anchor at the top, second anchor at the bottom. So I want to fade from the top to the bottom. And let's take a look at that. And so now we can see that that's clearly in the background there. So I'm happy with that. So I'll put that back in Z. And then we can go and select the ribbon. So, and we can see that there's only a small amount of wreath that we need to clear in order for the ribbon to be prominent and for it to be in the foreground. And so we could look at increasing the shape height if we wanted to or alternatively we could use the base height and so what that will do will just add height to the base of our component. So let's try that. So we'll just try 0 0.01 and press space to enter that in. Okay, so you can still see by the green areas here that we're not completely clearing that wreath. So let's just add in a little bit more. So we'll try 0 0.02 and press space to enter that in. And so now we can see that that's completely clearing the wreath and it's now sat proud in front of that wreath and is in the foreground. Then we have our wreath in the midground and our golf ball in the background just by doing a few alterations to those properties forms by looking at the shape height, how we can add base heights and add in fades also. So let's just close this form down and then we'll just put that back in Z then we'll go into the drawing tab and we'll just tile our windows vertically. So just a few more things to do uh, till we have the finished project. One of those things that I'd like to do is look at adding text as ultimately when we come to do the toolpaths for this I'd like to uh, v-carve some text into the ribbon. So to do that let's go over to draw text and then in here I'm just going to type in the text that I'd like to v-carve and we're going to type in hole in one and we're going to use the true type font then I'm going to scroll down into my font menu here and then if I press N on the keyboard that's going to bring me all of the uh, N fonts that begin with N. Okay, So I'd like to use this font here and then we're going to go and center that and I'd like to give that a text height of point Four. And then let's just press apply we can see that the text has been added there. So let's just close that down. And what I'd like to do is align my text to the shape of my ribbon here. So what I need to do is draw in a vector that represents the bottom of my ribbon in order for me to take the text and then use this option over here to wrap text along the curve. So to do that let's go and draw a polyline. 
and we'll maximize the 2D view. I'm just going to zoom in, I'm just going to roughly sketch in the shape that represents the bottom area of our ribbon. I'm just going to put in a point there, put a point up in the center there, and then a point at the bottom here. I'm going to come over and just close that down. We'll take that vector, let's go into the node edit mode. I'm just going to hover over this node here, right mouse click, use the option to smooth point. I'm then going to just drag this control handle down so it's in line with its node there. I'm going to take this one, do the same, just make that in line with its node there. We'll then select all of these nodes here and press Y to align those in Y. And you can see now we roughly have the same shape as the bottom area of our ribbon. So let's go into normal selection mode and we'll zoom to fit. I'm going to go and take that text and hold down shift and select this vector that we've got here. Then we're going to use the option here to wrap text along curve. And so we want the text position to be above the curve and I'm just going to put in an offset distance of 0.1 and let's just press apply see how that looks. Okay, so you can see the text is actually on the other side. So I'm going to uncheck this option here, text on the other side. You can see now their text has been put on the correct side of that vector that we created. And I'm happy with that. So let's just close that down. Then we'll just click in the space to deselect that. I can select that vector and then just press delete on the keyboard to delete that as I don't need that anymore. And then we'll go and tile our windows vertically. And so we're happy with the overall layout, we're happy with all of the heights of those overlapping areas. We've got our text in place and so we're almost at a finished stage. There's just one other finishing technique that I'd like to do. Now there is one thing that I'm noticing within our Golf Award model. If I just maximise the 3D view, if you take a look at the wreath and the golf ball, they look a lot softer in comparison to the ribbon. Now our ribbon has fairly sharp edges and that's okay and this is a subjective thing but what I'd like to do is just soften the ribbon just so it matches the appearance of the wreath and the golf ball. And To do that we're going to use this tool up here, the smooth filter. So I'm going to select the ribbon, we just put that in Z and then we'll go into the smooth filter option what that will do, it will do that at default of 50%. And so we can see that 50% is too much, so let's look at reducing that to around 20 or 25. Okay, so you can still see we've got the definite line of this area of our ribbon being in front of the folds at the back there. And we can still see that that's clearly in front of our wreath also. Okay, so now we have a nice soft appearance that matches that of the wreath and the golf ball. So I'm going to OK that. And so the last thing that I'd like to do is put our award into a dish. Now when we're working with parts that are recessed or dished below the modelling plane, it's very important that we have a component that represents that plane. And there's two reasons for this. One is that it helps us to visualise the part and two, it prevents some possible issues that we might have when we come to machining, which we'll look at when we set up the toolpaths. So to add in a modelling plane, let's go over to the model option here. We're going to add in a zero plane. So we'll do that and we can see that zero plane there. If I go to view and then we'll go and tile our windows vertical, you can see that we can't see that plane in our 2D view but we can see the component in our component tree. And the reason that we can't see that in the 2D view is if we go to our layers tab we can see it's automatically created this zero plane layer. And so if I switch that on we can see that component there. If I switch that off we can't see it. So by default when we create that zero plane the zero plane layer is switched off and that's just to help us view the 2D view so that it's not obscuring any components that we may already have in place. So let's go over to the modeling tab. So now I'm ready to put that golf award model into a dished shape. So to locate some more clip art let's go into the clip art tab we're going to use the domes and dishes option. You can see we've got various uh, dishes and domes. What I'd like to use is this flat round circle. So I'm going to double click that to put that in position. 
and we can see that that's there however it's currently set to merge if we want to create a dish shape we need to alter the combine mode and set that to subtract so I'm going to use this option here and then we'll go and set that to subtract and we can close that down we can see that's more of what we're looking for what I need to do now is just alter the size of that so that it fills um, the majority of our job space here so let's go into the drawing tab we'll go and set the size we're going to make that 7.5 press apply you can see that's updated there so let's just close that down put that back in Z and then what we need to do now is update the position of our golf award model so I'll just deselect that dish there and to select the text go into the modeling tab I'm just going to select the ribbon, the golf ball and the laurel wreath just holding down shift to select those we'll go into the drawing tab use the align option and I'm just going to align them to the center there let's close that down so now that I'm happy with the overall layout of my part I need to make sure that my golf award model is sat completely within that dish shape I could do that just by looking up one of the axes. I'm just going to look this axis here and I can see that um, nothing appears to be coming over the zero plane. So just to double check, we can go into the modeling tab and then I could use this option here to scale the Z height. Okay, so you can see the current height is just over 0 0.3 and then we have the maximum Z is at zero. So it's telling me that the highest point within our model is uh, the zero plane which is good that means that when I come to machine my part I'm not going to have any flat spots if I had um, a number higher than zero in the maximum Z then that would mean that part of the model within the dish is coming above that zero plane and then we would have flat spots if we cut that so it's always good to use a scale model height option to check that your model is sat completely within that zero plane in your dish Okay, so that's not too bad, however I do have a little bit more room to play with in terms of height, so I could look at increasing the heights of these components just to emphasize some of the detail here. So let's just OK that. To help me I'm just going to select the ribbon, hold down shift and select the wreath, and I'm going to right mouse click and I'm actually going to group them so that the software just sees that as one component and with that selected let's go into the properties option okay so you can see the combined shape height there is 0.2462 so I'm just going to increase this a little to around 0.3 let's press space to enter that in okay, so that's not too bad I could even go a little bit more let's try 0.35 and press space and you can see that we've really accentuated all of those uh, detailed areas there so I'm happy with that so the shape height for our golf award is 0.35 so we need to make sure that our dish is going to be more than that as if we take a look down the axis we can see it looks as though our model is coming over um, our modeling plane so let's go to the dish shape and we'll go to the properties there Okay, we can see it's at 0.33 so we need to look at increasing this and making sure that this is more than 0.35 which is the overall height of our golf award model so I'm going to do that by putting in a shape height of 0.4 which is larger than the 0.35 that our golf award model is set to so if we close that down and then if we just deselect that and then go back into the scale Z height of model we can see we have a current height of 0.4 and the maximum Z is at 0 which is our zero plane so we know that everything is sat within that zero plane it's sat in our dish so I'm happy with that so we can OK that and so that's now ready to take a stage further where we can go and calculate the toolpath and so that completes this tutorial where we've looked at how we can take existing clip art and assemble them to create a new model. We took a step-by-step -step approach to do this, starting with getting the general layout. We then looked at altering the heights to ensure the components are in front, behind or blending into other components. And then we placed the model into a dish. So let's go and save this file. So we'll go to File, Save As, and then in the Project folder, we're going to call this Golf 
award model press save and then you can access that from the project folder